This week on Cruise In. Is the gun loaded? We emptied it earlier. We visit the mob in Illyria for some great cars. Some car owners have slogans for their cars. I say, I say, don't call me chicken. And you don't call us Shirley. Car owners go to great lengths to keep their car's showroom clean. When I was eight years old, he would put one son at each wheel and say, you guys got little fingers, you could polish these wire wheels. Child labor? Hey, when you're dealing with the mob, sometimes you don't ask questions. Plus, I'll show you some of the little details that got me such a high score. Mike shows you how the little things could mean big points for show cars in Mike's Garage. Another episode of Cruise In is on right now. Are you kidding me? No, really, it, it starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cruise In. I'm Scott Miller, regular guy and car enthusiast just like you. We're in Elyria, Ohio for the Mob Boss Cruise In. Now, around here, if you're a mob boss, that means you meet over breakfast. We also had a chance to spend some time down in Boardman, Ohio for Cars at the Park. Let's see what we find. Laura, tell us about your 1955 Crown Vic. I've always had a special thing in my heart for Crown Vics, but you don't see them very often. So we went to a car show, and I walked down the aisle, and there sat a Crown Vic, two-tone green. And I looked at the name on it, and it said Dave Plummer, and I said, I know Dave Plummer. Uh, I said, uh, how would you like to sell your Crown Vic? And he said, are you kidding me? After all the money my son and I put into it, but I know where there is one. So he put me in contact with the gentleman who had this car, and we haggled a little bit over the, the price of it because it needed some work, and it still needs some work, but uh, I got the car. I realized afterwards that he had gotten it out of an estate and he put $1,000 on it as the value. So that's what I put on it too. Say so, uh, taxes, you know, and uh, I've worked on the interior. I've redone the seat covers and everything. I did it myself. And I had the top redone and uh, the rest of it needs to be painted. It has power brakes, power steering, power seats, power windows. It's, it's a ladies car. But how fitting that you find the car that you're looking for on a tip that it's light pink and cream. Well, originally it was green, I, because when I started taking the seat covers off, I realized that. But uh, somebody had changed it to light pink by the time I bought it. What's the plan for the exterior of the car? You said, I mentioned there's paint in the future. Yes. Uh, any other modifications that you would make outside of stock that would make it Laura's car? Well. I would like to redo the dashboard because the things in the dash don't, don't work. The radio doesn't work and there's some things in it do not work. But you work. have a marvelous singing voice. You don't need a radio, Laura. <laughs> well, if you'd been with me last Sunday, you wouldn't think so. Anyway, uh, I would like to have this part painted and I have to do the uh, trunk. And this is the original paint, the, the cream itself is original. So it's going to have to be done and if you look at it carefully, I think that one of the fenders at least was wrecked at one time and they replaced it and the pinks are not quite. How's it ride? Oh, it's like riding in a brand new car. I mean, it's beautiful, really. Do you still get that feeling when you get behind the wheel? Yes, yes. I haven't been able to drive it much this year. I had back surgery and I drove it last week and it's just, it's like you walk, you drive down the street and everybody goes, to my car and it's, it just gives me a great feeling. Well, that's the same feeling that we have when we see you in the car. We give you that thumbs up and we <laughs> thank you for your time. Thank you, for, thank you very much for loving my car as much as I do. Shirley and Jean, you must get a lot of thank you notes from chiropractors because the amount of necks that snapped around when this beautiful 58 Super 88 rolled in, countless. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, we, uh, I was looking for an Oldsmobile, but different model. And uh, so we went to Alliance, Ohio. They have an all old show. And we're looking around and uh, didn't find anything that would interest us. And we walked by this car my wife right away says, hey, we need something like that. And I wasn't real happy. But anyway, 
we look in the car over and here was a for sale sign in the trunk. And so uh, we uh, seen the man, he lived in Maslin, Ohio, and uh, talked to him and, and uh, was able to buy it from him. And the only reason he said I'll sell it to you because I gave him a little bit low ball figure. It, he says, I like your wife. <laughs> <laughs> and surely it, it was your determination that, that said, buy something like that. Now you were looking for an Oldsmobile, but what about the Super 88 made you say, that's the car I want? Well, it was beautiful for one thing, and uh, I call it the queen. <laughs> and uh, he, when we went by and saw that it was for sale, I said to him, this is the car you should have. Mm -hmm. He says, okay, we'll think about it. Is the car exactly the same as when you picked it up 14 years ago, or have you yes. done anything? Same. No. Exactly the same. I did a few items, uh, like the front bumper I re-chromed. This car was brought back, not original, to as original as possible. The seats and the uh, paint job is a, a, a original paint job and, and that, so consequently uh, that impressed me very much to have a car close to original. Now, do you share in the care and maintenance of the car? Does Shirley crack the whip and she say, Gene, that's all you. I'm, I'll be inside, I'll take care of something else. He told me that when we bought the car, since it was my car, he said, you're gonna clean all the chrome and I haven't cleaned any of it yet. <laughs> that's, you hold tough, you hold tough. Now, you are a member of a group called the Car Coddlers. That is correct. Mm -hmm. I, I'm one of three left that formed the club. This is our 50th year, and it's kind of like this is a 50th year tour. Yeah. If there's anything you can do to the car outside of where you have it right now, what would you do? Would you add anything? A no, I, I don't think so. I mean, everything is, and you know, it's been running good. Um, I, I, I can't say that I, I can improve it. There's a lot of luxury in the Super 88 from back in 1958. Is that one of the other reasons that drew you to the car? You, I mean, if you're going to spend some time in it, you might as well be comfortable. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it is. is comfortable. It is. A, being it's so heavy, that, uh, and it's amazing, uh, a car this old, uh, what always surprises me is the transmission, how, how nice it shifts. Uh, and uh, I never had anything done to it. I never had anything done to the engine. That, that was all done by the man that previously owned it. Coming up next. My daughter bought me a hat that said, uh, See how the hat influenced this Mercury. Next. Welcome back to the Mob Car Show on Cruise In. Greg and Pamela, are those your real names? They are. <laughs> okay. Wow, you guys went right to the period, full costume. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the car, and, and is this something that you do whenever you go out, dress up this way? Uh, we, don't, no. we don't dress up a lot, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we've been up to Henry Ford a few times. Then uh, at the old car festival up there, we dress up, take the car to shows and stuff. I have to say, there's a bullet hole in the windshield. <laughs> Now, would that be a result of anything that's happened recently or <laughs> perhaps in the past? That, that happened in the past. <laughs> How yeah, did you come about the car? I was looking for an older car, and uh, my next door neighbor has old cars, and he said I need one so we can go to shows and stuff. So I found it on eBay over in Westchester, Pennsylvania, and picked it up. Drove over and trailed it back and did a few repairs on it and been driving it ever since. So it was running, what type of repairs did you make? Yeah, it ran, but it wasn't running great. I did a little carburetor work and some electrical work. Well, the car certainly has a uh, period unique features. Uh, wooden spoke wheels, yeah. uh, love the full-blown spring bumper. The back seat is absolutely huge. Yeah. <laughs> and Pamela, how do you feel about when you, when you get to do the period costume? You go with the flapper, you're ready to have some fun? Oh, it's a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. Do some dancing. No, I don't dance, don't dance. <laughs> Not used to wearing the shoes, so. Now, in the 27, what kind of engine came with that? It's a straight line six, 230, 239 cubic inches, 84 horsepower. Yeah, manual transmission? Manual transmission, three speed, 
Well, obviously, yeah. some of the creature comforts aren't available as we see in cars today with air conditioning. No air conditioning, no. <laughs> I see some venting. Does that help at least oh, alleviate yeah. some? Helps a lot, yeah. And yeah. the windshield rolls up and down. Yeah, yeah. You would call it flow through ventilation. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty comfortable to drive. Ride now, smooth. I see a two tone. I would I would assume I I'm going to say teal. Is that an official Buick color or? It is the official color. Yeah, black so that's and teal. The original paint. It has it. No, it's probably been repainted about 50 years ago. Same okay. factory colors. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, it's pretty much all original. Got the mohair interior and everything. Buys yeah. black tires. Nothing special beyond nothing that. No, nope, nothing special there. <laughs> but it rides like a dream. Mechanical brakes. Yeah, it rides great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun car to drive. One final question. Yes. Is the gun loaded? No. <laughs> We it, emptied it earlier. <laughs> Along with the bank, though. Yep. That's how we got the money. <laughs> thank you, Greg and Pam. Thank okay, you. Thank you. When you're done driving the car to a location like this or wherever you take it out, does it feel weird to step on solid ground? Well, yeah. it looks like it's floating on a cloud. Yeah, it is. It really rides nice, you know. Where did you come to the, or where did you, how did you come in possession of the car? Uh, I was at a car show, the uh, North Ridgeville Corn Festival, and I saw the car and I told the guy, <clears throat> that's really what I've been looking for. If you ever decide to sell it, let me know. So uh, a couple, uh, probably a year later, he called me and said he was thinking about selling the car. He had lung cancer. And uh, I said, well, I'm interested, but uh, what do you want for it? And he, he was asking more than I wanted to pay, so we kind of dickered over for about three months, and then finally we agreed on a price, and I bought the car. And the car hasn't changed since you took possession of it? No, no, it looks just like it did when I bought it. Well, it looks like an ivory white, and the, the depth of the black paint is fantastic. Right. And, you know, the Montclair details on here are obviously very evident with the Mercury as well. If you look at the hubcaps, uh, what's in the center of the hubcap? That's the uh, Mercury emblem for Mercury, the Mercury man, you know. And, uh, in the back, it's not so much Mercury. It's a little more Warner Brothers and cartoon. What's Foghorn Leghorn doing on your car? Well, uh, my daughter bought me a hat that said, uh, was Foghorn Leghorn, and said, I say, I say, don't call me chicken. And uh, my wife and I kind of liked that when we got the Continental and it had a rose on it. And I took it out to this guy in Leary and I took my hat and I said, could you uh, maybe paint this on my Continental? He said, sure. So he, uh, he did it for me. I think it was $120. This was about eight, nine years ago I had that done. We just uh, kind of like Foghorn Leghorn. Did you do a little bit of research about the car? Is there anything you didn't know about the car that you're finding out now that's, uh, that just makes it a little more you and you know gives you a little more warm and fuzzy? Well, this goes back to my high school days. I can still remember seeing one sitting at a gas station, hearing it run, and he had glass packs on it. And that just stuck in my mind all my life, you know. And I said, one day, maybe I can get me a, either a 56 Ford or a 56 Merc, and I've ran into the 56 Merc. So it's kind of what I always wanted. So I, I went ahead and bought it. Well, I like your license plate up front. Now, you realize Barney Fife only carries one bullet, and the right. likelihood of him actually shooting it or firing it pretty uh pretty slim <clears throat> but still it's just that uh i've loved the show for so long and i just always kind of like barney so i saw that down in amish country so i said i gotta have that and put it on my car you know so, well the car looks like it could be rolling right out of mayberry and right into the year 2014. right, right yeah it, it drives nice real nice yeah coming up i can't stress cleanliness enough it's next to godliness and big points at car shows. Mike's next on Cruise In. Welcome back to Cruise In. Hi, I'm Mike, and this is my garage. So I just attended the 21st annual Camaro Fall Classic for the uh, NEOCC. So what I want to talk to you guys about is the judging and points and everything to try and go to these shows and win. 
Now, you see here was my Camaro that I attended with. Look at it and you think, how do you do that? Well, this show produced 225 Camaros. I'll show you some of the little details that got me such a high score, but still didn't get me first. Little tips and tricks, you know, everybody's gonna get this all nice and clean, but what they're looking for is above and beyond. You know, everything up top, if you're gonna drive them, you're gonna get some dirt down low. You gotta get in all those little nooks and crannies. A little trick even for mine, here. You, you can't avoid a chipped paint. When metal hits metal to latch, it, it's gonna chip paint. Well, you want that little extra trick? Little piece of rubber tubing, hides it, makes it look good. You know, judges eat that stuff up. Again, it's all about details, guys. That's a detail. I can't stress cleanliness enough. We'll go to the interior next and we'll show you some tips there. Having judged cars in the past and watching the judges, they're gonna look for the less obvious. Anybody can clean that floor mat and make it good, but what about that crack that's real hard to get to next to the seat? Good tip. Compressed air, air hose. Blow them out, get all those little dust bunnies, those little fuzzballs, that little bit of lint, dirt, whatever, that tends to creep its way down. Get that out of there. That could be that point that takes you first, second, or third. Blow it all out. I believe looking at my judging sheets that I had gotten a flawless on the interior. I take to the show masking tape with me. Take that masking tape, wrap it upside down, put it around your tape, tap it out since, you know, at a show you don't have vacuum cleaner. Take that tape, get them fuzzies off, make sure that interior is impeccable. It's one of the easiest things to get some extra points with the judges and to make sure that you stay on top. Glass, no streaks, whatever you gotta do, they make some invisible glass products, you know, your Windexes, whatever, lint-free rags, glass. Though look, if they're streaked up, the guy with the clear glass, he's gonna beat you. When you're showing against all cars of the same make, like that show, you know, it's a Camaro against a Camaro. You're talking fanatical guys in these classes. A lot of competition means a lot harder cars to beat. Okay, a show board. Sometimes you put them out in front of your car at a show. When the judges come around, if you've got your modifications and everything listed, it's something they can look at and say, hey, you know, I didn't even notice that. Or let's give that guy a little bit of extra props for that. A show board can help you, but remember, any modification you do puts you in a different class. You know, the, the, for the NEOCC, they have a guy classify your car. Think about your mods, do them tastefully, because it can change the outcome first, second, third place. There's a lot going on at these shows, and a little bit of extra thought will go a long way. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time on Mike's Garage. Next up. I always loved the car. I think it's a unique car. They only made 836 of them. It's rare, big, and beautiful, and it's next on Cruise In. Welcome back to more mob action on Cruise In. Gary, that's a couple of colors of blue that absolutely go fantastic together. Tell us about your 54 Skylark convertible. Well, it was owned by my dad. He bought it in 58, drove it to 69, and put it in the garage and piled stuff on it until I was able to get it away from him in 1980. And I finished the restoration in 1988, and it's just been a good driver for me. Describe the getting it away from him process. Was he? Well, he had six sons. Uh, and when I was eight years old, he would put one son at each wheel and say, you guys got little fingers, you can polish these wire wheels. Well, my brothers didn't have the stomach for it, and I'd end up doing not only my wheel, but theirs. And when I was eight, I told my dad I really wanted the car, and, and then I constantly told him I wanted it, so uh, he parted with it for a few thousand dollars. Said he couldn't give it to me, but... So you didn't get any back pay for all the wheel cleaning that you no. did to give you a discount on the car? No, I didn't, but uh, I, I always loved the car. I think it's a unique car. They only made 836 of them. There's about 200 left in the world. We have uh, members of the 5354 Skylark Club in Spain, Norway, England, uh, New Zealand, Australia, Canada. 
so there's very few of them left. Yeah, out of the box, one of the distinctive features is the wheel wells. And obviously, since you've got the two-tone combination, it really, really makes them pop. Yeah. Well, the wheel wells it were either white, red, or black. Uh, the car is stock the way it is. It was, you know, I restored it to original condition. And they, they opened the wheel wells. These wheels were originally designed for the 53 Buick Skylark, the first Skylark ever made. And they wanted to, to really extend the uh, wire wheels, and they actually opened up the wheel wells. So it's, that's the way it came from the factory. Uh, wheels were designed in Italy and uh, made by Kelsey Hayes in Michigan. Got yourself a 200 plus horsepower V8 in there. Tell us about the interior. Comfy? Oh yeah, it's all leather. Uh, the car came with a ton of uh, options on the car. Um, power windows, power brakes, power antenna, six-way power seat, power top, um, and they're all, all, most of that is hydraulic. 516 hydraulic hoses with hydraulic pistons. How many miles on the car when you got it? Uh, seven, eight thousand. And now? Uh, it's in the 90s. I've driven the car to Kenny Buckport, Maine. Uh, last year I drove it to Monaco, Wisconsin. Two weeks I'll drive it to Louisville, Kentucky. A lot of thumbs up and a lot of winks on the road. The car lopes along at 70 miles an hour. I get about 17 miles per gallon. It's, you know, I pass a lot of people on the freeway and they go, what's wrong with this guy? It just lopes along like a big old car and it rides real smooth. Well, nobody got shot and nobody got a pair of cement shoes. We want to thank everybody here in O'Leary that welcomed us out for the Mob Boss Godfather Cruise and also our fun time that we spent at Cars in the Park in Boardman. We'll catch you next time on Cruise In.